Hello everyone. So I thought I'd just have to take a little look at this Gatwick drone attack possible inside job police. So because of the way it's worded more than anything else. So the Gatwick drone attack. Okay. So this was um, published 14th of April 2019. So a little bit after the fact because this happened December um, 2018. But let's just take a little peek at what's been said here. So, the drone attack caused chaos during at, at Gatwick before Christmas was carried. The drone attack that caused chaos at Gatwick before Christmas was carried out by someone with knowledge to the airport's operational procedures. The airport has said. A Gatwick chief told BBC Panorama the drone's pilot seemed to be able to see what was happening on the runway. Sussex police told the program that poss the possibility an insider was involved was a credible line of inquiry. Also, we got 140,000 passengers caught up in the disruption. Uh, they closed the airport for 33 hours. Um, you know, I'm not being funny, but when Lady Diana was killed in that car, they closed that tunnel for an hour, had it cleared up and business as usual. In the first interview since the incident, Gatwick Chief Operating Officer Chris Woodruff told Panorama it was clear that the drone operators had a link had a link into what was going on at the airport. Mr. Woodruff Woodruff, who was who was the executive overseeing the airport's response to the attack, the Gold Commander, also said that whomever was piloting the drone whomever was piloting the drone could either see what was happening on the runway or was following the airport's actions by eavesdropping on radio or internet communications okay that confuses me unless these are all open broadcast things like uh, the internet communications uh, on radio if it's all open broadcast fair enough yeah um, so you know is it eavesdropping really if you're broadcasting publicly you don't have to eavesdrop to hear it do you and whoever was responsible for the attack had specifically selected a drone which could not be seen by the DJI aeroscope drone detection system that the airport was testing at the time he added okay so either the system doesn't work or yeah we've got a drone that doesn't um, this is interesting, I'm going to have to look that up, what this uh, DJI Aeroscope Drone Detection System actually is. No overreaction. Despite a huge operation drawing resources from five of the forces and a 5,000, 50,000 pound reward, there's still no trace of the culprit. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? So that's six forces, six police forces involved in a suspected drone attack. You gotta remember these words because words are very important when he's playing into the into the psyche, into the minds of the general public. So like words like attack, eminent death, you know? <laughs> okay. So the first sighting of the drone was at twenty twenty one oh three GMT on the nineteenth of December. Twenty one oh three GMT. Well that's dark then. I mean by the time you get into December we're getting dark here. About oh, I don't know, five o'clock. We're dark at five, but it was not until 0557 GMT on the 21st of December that flights resumed with an aircraft landing. Okay. Okay, the first sighting of the drone. So Gatwick says it repeatedly tried to reopen the runway, but on each occasion the drone reappeared. Airport protocol mandates that the runway be closed if a drone is present. Okay, okay, that's fair enough. But it says Gatwick said it repeatedly tried to open. I wonder how many times repeatedly is, because repeatedly sounds like quite a few times. Um, but on each occasion, the drone reappeared. So we got to say then that this drone is just popping up and then disappearing. And there's no photos, there's no video evidence, there's no nothing like that. But let's let's just put that to one side for now. Uh, but this thing's popping up, and even though they're on this high alert. And they want to reopen the airport or a runway the drone keeps reappearing but they can't find out where this drone is they see it but they can't find it 
They see it in the air, but no one can track it. No one can watch which direction it goes off onto, nothing like that. Anyway, Mr. Woodruff denies claims the, op the airport overreacted, describing, obviously it's going to, isn't he? Describing the situation it faced as an unprecedented, unprecedented, malicious and criminal incident. There is obviously nothing that I would do differently when I look back at the incident because ultimately my number one priority has to, has to, has to be to maintain the safety of our passengers and that's what we did. Nothing about the prices of those airplanes, it's all about the safety of people these day and age, isn't it? Duty of care. It was terrible that 140,000 people's journeys were disrupted but everyone was safe. What a hero. Mr Woodruff also dismissed the suggestion that the number of sightings had been exaggerated and the theory circulated online that there had been no drone at all. We haven't found a drone, no one's managed to take videos of it or photos of it even though it could be seen, but there still has to be a drone. These claims have been fueled by the fact that there was no verified pictures of the drone and very few eyewitnesses have spoken publicly. All right. Okay. Police, had, police told the BBC that they recorded 130 separate credible drone sightings by a total of 115 people, all but six of whom were professionals. Oh, well, if they're professionals, it must have happened. But none of them got a video footage of it, none of them took a photo of it, even though they could all see it and there were credible drone sightings. Some were including police officers, security personnel, air traffic control staff and pilots, but nobody managed to figure out where this drone was coming. We don't know if it was going east, west, south, north, nothing. Anyway, Mr. Woodrow said that many of the drone sightings were by people he knew personally mm, and trusted. Mm, members of my team. Mm, People I have worked with for a decade, people who have worked for 30 years on the airfield who fully understand the implications of reporting a drone sighting. Of course they understand the implications. You might get paid five million quid to get some tech in with some new training and people get some great jobs out of it. Huh, they wouldn't do it for that though, would they? That'd be very naughty. They knew they'd seen a drone. They know they saw a drone. I know they saw a drone. We we appropriately closed the airport. Panorama had been told, blah, blah, blah. At least one person noticed the characteristics of the drone shape, while others described it as industrial or commercial. Really? So they're that familiar with drones, are they? They can, dis they can distinguish between many, many drones, homemade, off the shelf, and between industrial and commercial, like police drones or something. Mm. and not something you could pop into Argos for, an airport spokesman said. They do seem quite familiar on drones. Other international airports have installed counter drone technology. Gatwick has confirmed that in the days after the attack, it spent five million on similar equipment. Uh, I'm just gonna mince down here a little bit. Panorama has learned that Gatwick bought two sets of AUDS, anti-UAV, defence systems, anti-drone systems, made by a consortium of three British companies. I wonder if Mr Woodrow is friends with any of those from those companies. That would be an interesting little uh, subject to look up. Uh, do you want to come from... Right, we, we, would ha we would have known the drone was arriving on site and we would have known that the drone had come from. We would have known where the drone had come from and where it was going to. Really? I mean, that's a good bit of kit you've got there then. If you know where it's come from, yeah? You know when it's arriving on site. If you know where it come from, you know where it's going to. I suppose that's if you can track it. You'd have thought all those people looking at it would have said, hey, yeah, it came from over there. I've been watching it. And it's been going over in this direction. And then I saw it go over into that direction. Didn't cost five million quid, like, did it? All right. And we'd have a better chance of catching the perpetrator. Every day, he said, the airport sends up a drone. Huh. Every day, he said, the airport sends up a drone to detect the, to 
to test the detection equipment and it finds that drone. Every day, he says, the airport sends up a drone. Maybe they've just bought their own drones. They didn't send for that buying drones. They just said about buying anti UAV defense systems. <laughs> but he added, he added, he added, what this incident has de demonstrated is that the drone operator with malicious intent can cause serious disruption to airport operations. Oh, yes, it can. And it also goes to show that if somebody says they've seen something, but they can't actually prove it, they can also, they can also disrupt, cause serious disruption to airport operations. Okay, so let's have a little, little bit, of, a little bit going on there. So we, that, that was from a, a good old people at the BBC. This is from CNN, another trusted news outlet. Oh, you've got to trust these people. Police hunt drone pilots in unprecedented Gatwick airport disruption. At least it's not an attack this time. United Kingdom second blah blah blah. Uh, it was closed since 9pm Wednesday. Brief 45 minutes on Thursday. After drones, now we've gone into plural, drones. Right after drones were spotted near the airfield. Passengers due to fly on Thursday couldn't go, blah. And it's really terrible because it's over that Christmas period where you're going to get all the, what I'd call the posher people, the ones who can afford the extortionate ticket prices and they're going to go around the places. The people who have influence with power, with blogs, with newspapers, with all the stuff they can start writing this down stuff, writing this stuff down. I've seen them on a road, they're still whining about it now. Passengers due to fly on Thursday, blah, blah. Police were still on the hunt for the drone operators who have brought the airport to a standstill. So it could have been a drone operator, but we've gone to operators. Each time we believe we get close to the operator, the drone disappears. I wonder how they're actually trying to get close to the operator. When we look to reopen the airport, air, airfield, the drone reappears. Whoa. Sussex Police Superintendent Justin Justin Birkenshaw told the UK Press Association. Uh, a police helicopter flies over runway at Gatwick Airport. I'm sorry. The Ministry of Defence said that it has deployed specialist equipment to Sussex to assist Sussex police in their efforts. Wow, the Ministry of Defence ran in this as well. The most recent drone sighting was about 4.30 p.m. Okay, I thought it was a little bit later, but... Uh, Woodrow says a major international airport located in South Lake will it reopen blah 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 because I need to get through this important stuff uh, sharing real anger and frustration so I would like to repeat how sorry we are for the inconvenience this criminal behaviour has caused passengers has caused passengers and we share their real anger not their anger but their real anger and frustration that this has happened aviation expert oh god John Parker told CNN He'd seen nothing on this, on this scale before in terms of deliberate disruption by a drone to a major UK airport. Listen, as far as I can tell, the only people who disrupted that airport so far is the people in it. Because so far, we haven't got a drone, we've got no video footage, we've got no nothing, but we have got a big load of hype about drones. We've got people going after airspace and stuff like that, so we want big hype about drones. And of course, these airports would like five million quids worth of kit, so they can employ more people or retrain the people who've got. It's going to generate more money within the actual airport, and that's always good news as well. So, the usual practice when a drone is spotted is to suspend flights for half an hour which is the usual battery lifespan for drones, explained Parker, a former Royal Air Force fighter pilot and head of drone training company Flyby Technology. <laughs> but in the case of Gatwick, whoever was responsible had several batteries and, uh, and have brought their drones back to the ground and put new batteries in them. In them. So they've got several batteries. So all this time was happening, three days, right, this goes to show how pathetic these people are. Three days, oh, almost uh, just lightning. Three days this is going on, and they couldn't. And the drone's going back to the pilot, getting recycled a battery, and then going back out again. Or drones, because they say drone in one hand, and they're saying drones. And so, all this time this is happening, no one's actually following the drone. I'm pretty sure that I did see in one of these things that. Uh, it was going around all over the place quite badly. So two people arrested in connection with the drone incidents, drone disruptive flights, blah, blah, details of suspects. Police did not provide any details of the suspects. 
Um, the arrests have been made this evening, determined in public state, blah, blah. Airport uh, aims to run or schedules on flights on Saturday, but warn travellers uh, delays and cancellations. Because you've got to remember, they've got the people and then they're not flying the drones anymore, right? So Gatwick briefly suspended again on Friday. There's another report of a sighting with drone leaves thousands of people stranded facility. I mean, these people are getting really messed around, aren't they? I bet they really want to get blogging with this. Uh, unconfirmed sightings at 5.20 p.m. on the Friday. Unconfirmed. Unconfirmed. So, yeah, was there a sighting? Wasn't there a sighting? A statement where airports, blah, blah, airport said on Twitter are trying to respond to an unprecedented number of tweets. So the airport is trying to respond to an unprecedented number of tweets. Why? Why? Just because you've got some sort of tweet thing. That means you've got to respond to everything. Jesus Christ, you've been doing nothing all day apart from prying around doing that. Thousands of people have been stranded at the airport. A thousand flights have been cancelled. 150,000 people since Wednesday evening, affecting up to 150,000 people. So the numbers just keep going up, don't they? Um, two million people expected to pass through, blah blah. Right, let's get on to the next one because police find damaged drone as couple arrested over chaos at Gatwick Airport was released. Right, so there's their faces, they look younger than what they say is down here because you've got a Paul, he's 47, and you've got a Elaine, she's 54. They spent more than 36 hours being quizzed by police. Now, the way that they did this as well is that the police came in with guns into their homes took them away, arrested them, and kept them incommunicado. So let me just get down to that bit, because they were saying at one stage it wasn't a terrorist thing, they just thought it was something somebody pranked with a drone. So why go in there with guns in these people's... Uh... So, uh, da, 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 da. but police confirmed they're no longer suspects, and said a, da a damaged drone was found near the north perimeter of Gatwick would be taken away for investigation. So no photos of that, there's nothing I've heard from since. But these people were no longer suspects, okay? And now they've put out, uh, this is uh, Australian dollars, I presume, uh, 90,000 reward for the real culprit. So, uh, we are meticulously going through the information to see if it produces any other further lines of inquiry and also where they may focus on efforts in terms of house to house, house, to house inquiries, CCTV footage that you'd think that an airport would have plenty of and there'd be something that the airport cameras would have found and any other information that will help us work through this investigation. And of course, while all this is going on still, this drone has gone back, been rebattered, gone back out again, back, rebattered, gone back out again. How many times? We don't really know. But no one still, none of the security cameras, none of the security, none of the police, nobody managed to take a photo or get any video evidence of it going on. Okay? Nobody managed to do any of that. Uh, so I'm not going to put their names and arrested on Friday connection drone invasion has been shut down UK second busy airport so right in connection with the drone invasion the, the words the words are brilliant here drone invasion that had shut down the UK second busiest airport a house in Crawley about eight kilometers uh, from the airport was searched on Saturday uh blah 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 it's just about talking about his employer uh he saw him once playing with a helicopter check out gatwick times a persistent drone crisis at gatwick 45 miles south of london had a ripple effect throughout the international air international air travel system wednesday night and i think that's what it was supposed to do that's why it was chosen for that time of year for it to happen as well a Gatwick spokesman said that, uh, that things were going in the right direction. Uh, the weekend, after a horrendous few days, horrendous, horrendous few days, the horror, the horror in the drone that no one can video, that people think they see but no one can video. People have been told, hey, you can't go on your flight. That's horrendous. Wow, how wet are we as a, as a, as a, as a country to think that if you're going to be delayed or your flight you might be cancelled for something that you can't see yourself, that's horror horror they obviously haven't lived or you know um so a few days saw tens of thousands of people stranded or delayed from tens of thousands people say the investigation is ongoing even though they did say hey look we got this problem i think don't bother coming phone up before you come here and sit and wait so if loads and loads of people are going there and they're not phoning up then they're stupid British police uh, have not said if they think the two suspects, suspects actually alone or as part of a larger group. Right, so these two suspects that have already been released, had nothing to do with it, 
um, they're, they're trying to find out if they're part of a bigger group. The motive for their aggressive drone flights, aggressive drone flights, okay, it's all in the wording you see with these people. Aggressive drone flights, oh, these are terrible, terrible flights, has not been established, but officials say there are no indications it is terror related. Which makes me ask myself, why did they go in after them with guns? Why did the police decide, hey, it's not terror related. Is it one of those things like in this country now, if the policeman comes up to you and says, hey, what are you doing? You say, oh, I don't know, I'm just, just filming the building over there. Oh, I want to see some ID. I don't have to give you any ID. I'm not doing anything wrong. Right, I'm, I'm detaining you under the, the, uh, the suspect of being a terrorist, section 43, and I'm going to rifle through your stuff trying to find out who you are. I wonder if it's one of those things where they come after you with guns, even though they say it's nothing to do with terrorism, but they're going to come after you with guns anyway because they can. We got the power! One of those types of things. Uh, many noticed the freezing uncomfortable it was. Oh, man. Well, these poor people, that was the horror, wasn't it? Because it noted how, how freezing and uncomfortable it was to be in the lobby of an airport. Uh, so, <laughs> the Gatwick Airport drone arrest couple to receive 200,000. 200,000. Now, I don't think they're going to take that out of the Police Benevolent Fund. That's going to come from public money, of course. So the, the taxpayer is going to pay Paul and Elaine 200,000 for, um, for something they had, they had nothing to do with, that they were just detained for 36 hours. So they were released after, without further charge after being detained held for 36 hours despite the fact they did not possess any drones and had been at work during the reported sightings. The couple had settled their claims of wrongful arrest and false imprisonment against Sussex police outside of court and the legal team announced on Sunday. So this is £200,000 out of the public purse now to go to these people. Uh, so I'm just having a quick look. See, you can pause this. You can look yourself. Uh, Statements to light find vindication, police justice. So, uh, yeah, so confirming of innocence and wrongful treatment because they were, uh, they were held incommunicado. Here it says, they were, um, we look forward to moving on and putting this terrible episode behind us. They say, despite the apology, they still, they still have no explanation for why they were held incommunicado for 36 hours, which means they can't talk to anyone, they can't talk to each other. And this is going on the fact that they didn't think it was a um, a, um I suppose if you're going to spend £5 million for this disruption, you're going to really give, give the people you think may have done it, or may not have done it. I mean, the police are probably just doing, doing what they're told. We've got no idea what's actually happening within the circles of the airport. Um, so, yeah, they were there whole commun incommunicado for 36 hours, just like they were terrorists or something. Um, a letter to the couple, blah blah, from the David Constable Miller, Chief Constable David Miller. Uh, experience unpleasantness of arrest and detention. Traumatic time. Unfortunately, when the police carry out functions on behalf of the public, sometimes innocent people are arrested as part of the necessary police investigation. Um, okay, so I'm pretty sure I did find it. You, you know, people might have to go through it for themselves. But I'm pretty sure I found that they said that they went in, the police went in with guns. It was armed police went in there. But somebody may have been uh, using a drone in a stupid place. Now, don't get me wrong. I need to say this. I probably should have said it from the start. If you're doing things like this, all right, not only are you causing problems for other hobbyists, all right, people who like and enjoy their time with their drones, you're a dick. And if you're doing it because you're trying to cause problems at the airport, you're a triple dick. You really, really are. You, you're one of the, the, the stupidest of stupid people. Because if you've got the, the talents to be flying them around and doing, you could probably do some good with them. So that's, I just want to put that across. I just don't believe the BBC. I certainly do not believe this independent. And if you want a quick little look into the independent on how honest that is with you. So you click on the independent, you want to read a news report and you think, that's it, I'm getting the independent, right? But if you click on the independent, see all this other stuff? That's defaulted as that I don't allow them to connect. All this other stuff is trying to connect. Right, trusted as Google, got no choice. 
but all the other stuff is trying to connect and that's just by connecting to this website to this the independent this is how many other sites how many other servers are trying to get into your browser leave cookies follow track and do all sorts while you're just viewing an article all right so anyway that's that's my little thing on the on the on the um, they, so, so to date to date they still don't have a drone they said they found some broken thing but they never actually connected it to this and they've given no images of it or anything like that so you can't even say if they find a little Simon x5c broken you, you could say hey well that's not the industrial commercial one there these people these so-called eyewitnesses were talking about no 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 that's just some stupid little thing you could buy off the shop at Argos so there's been no connection there there's been no pilot so far found there's been no drone found and with in with all the ins and outs of that drone apparently being rebatteried and then sent out again it goes to show how crap the police the security at the airport is and any of the eyewitnesses out that they can't actually see this drone i did read in another one um I read in another article that this drone was supposed to be high speed, flying low, high speed with real bright lights on it. I thought it was an aeroplane myself when I the description. High speed, flying low, because, you know, airports, they tend to have them coming in, landing or taking off. And that's normally done pretty low level. And uh, bright lights, and they've got to be bright lights on them. But hey, nah, that's just me thinking. That's just me thinking. What are your thoughts? Has anybody else got any more information about this? Has anybody seen anything else where there's been any more information that I've not managed to find and would be um, would be would be helpful with understanding what actually happened at Gatwick that 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 over those three days, that 36 hours? Leave your thoughts in the comments in the uh, in that section below, and I'd love to read and understand what you what you think on this yourselves. Till next time. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody.